What's going on guys? So today we're going to be adding a little bit of party to the front on my daily driven M3 sedan. My birthday was in January and some of my boys, Alex, Daniel, uh, I think Daniel's fiance Kylie, and I believe Tom was in on this too, went in and bought me a Macau Motorsports front splitter. So I'm very excited to put this on today. It's going to be very nice. We have a lot of fun stuff going on on the front already, so it'll just add a nice little touch along with all of our rear end stuff and just kind of you know, balance the arrow because we have a lot of arrow in the back. We've got the roof spoiler and the LTW wing, and we really don't have any arrow in the front. This is, I guess, the latest iteration of Macaw's mounting setup, so they made it like a fully adjustable. The first mounts they came out with were like solid mounts, there were no adjustability. Apparently, this one will go up and down a couple of inches. And I was trying to look at, they don't really don't have any instructions on how to put this stuff together, and the consensus from what I've seen online is that really nobody has a really good clue how to put this together. I'm just kind of mocking it up and it does seem to be a little weird. For instance, if we put these holes aligned there, the bottom isn't flush, so I don't know what that means. So we will find out how this works. It's going to be a little bit more fun on my car because I have a hot boy oil cooler and this Johnny goes through the bumper which means the bumper isn't going to be able to actually come completely off and i really don't have um, a lot of space with the lines to play with as you can see they're routed pretty tight the way they are so i don't know if we're going to be able to take the bumper completely off that's probably going to make the install a little bit more fun it is like mid-february and everyone's been bugging me to put this on but we've been spending like the last month getting the cheetah ready for a shift event and with tires and sticker bombing fenders and wheel bearings and steering wheels and all that stuff and harnesses so that took a little while so now we finally get to get to this johnny all right so i've separated out my hardware so we have these guys we have those guys we have four nuts for those, four of these lock washers are going there. We've got these hardware, these lock washers, those have lock washers. These hardware are going to use some of these lock washers, some of these lock wires. And then we have <coughs> our 16 of these. So I was just trying to figure out which one goes where. So for anyone who gets one of these and wants a, a little bit more thorough of an install video, so these guys, the one you have 16 of, are going to go there. So you have four there. And then they're the ones that hold these guys back here. So this is going to hold that plate up and this plate up. These guys are going to go through this plate up here. So those are the four of the longer ones. Um, these guys are going to go through the bottom of the splitter up to that to hold that there. And then these guys... Are gonna go this way through those holes up there so um, apparently there's five so there's two number four says there's two of each and um, I only have four sets of screws I don't have five so I think I'm missing some hardware um, I only have four washers for those I don't have any other washers for these so I don't know if those are missing washers or not so the setup for these washers, so this washer is going to go on that nut there. This is then going to go up underneath, through the bottom, through the plate, and then you'll put a lock washer on top of that, and then the nut. And kind of the same thing with these. So we're going to put a washer through there, then we'll have the flat washer, we'll stick that through the thing, and then you put your lock washer on, and then your nut's going to go on. So. Let's get to assembling and just kind of see what happens. All right, so I've got one side fully assembled. So the hardware is going that side down, going up. That way we have less space on the bottom. Um, as far as orientation of this goes, this lines up with kind of the contour of that. So if you put this one on that side, you're going to have it sticking out. So that only goes one way. And the picture indicated that this bracket wants to kind of be on the inside. So if you do that one, it's going to be on the outside. So that's kind of the orientation for that. These pieces and then this piece here are the same. So I don't think it really matters. Um, as far as setup goes, you'll have that. Then it'll be that thing. And then it'll be these over that. 
that seems to be the way that it wants to go. So that should be our setup. We use about half of our hardware, which is ideal. So I think I have the hardware set up correctly. Um, I don't know if these should go there or those should go here. I don't really think it makes that much of a difference. These bolts here are the four longer ones and they do seem to be a little overkill because they're sticking through pretty hard, but that would kind of be the same here. I don't really know if it'd make that much of a difference, but everything is still loose as you can see. Um, they do have like some adjustment holes here, but that doesn't really want to slide because these are anchored. These don't have adjustments in them. So I think this is kind of just for setup. And then right here is where your height adjustment is. I feel like it should though. Yeah, okay. So that goes up and down, which in turn will raise and lower the whole splitter. So I'm gonna kind of go throw the other side together and then we'll start tearing into the car. As you can tell, um, from a hardware standpoint, we have our flat washers there, and then our crush washers on the back. Let's get a good shot of that. So there's that little sprinkle star washer, and kind of the same thing for these. We have the flat washer there, and then the crush washer on the back. All right, so we got both mounting tabs on. I tightened down these four here, these two back here, and then our two little guys in the middle here. Um, the reason is, is that's not gonna move anywhere. Uh, I do want to have a little bit of adjustability here. You can see it has some uh, horizontal play because I don't know if we're gonna need to be out or in, so I just kind of left them loose. So that'll still slide up and down. They do use hardware. That is Phillips on one side and just normal nuts on the other side. And personally, I freaking hate that. I think it's just lazy. And as far as hardware goes, they're, they're, they're pretty awful to work with, but it is what it is, such is life. So this is ready, just about ready to get put on the car. So now we gotta start taking stuff off the car. All right, so I've got one side up on a wheel ramp. So I should be able to get under there to take the under tray that we have on already off. I was kind of also hoping we could take the bumper off and just kind of move it a little bit out to the side so we don't have to disconnect the oil lines because that cooler system has about two quarts of oil in it and if I have to take it apart, it's gonna be a freaking mess. Moment of truth, let's see what happens. All right, so here's my old under tray, which was just an under tray, it wasn't a lip or anything. And the Macaw lip, which is an actual lip, is uh, significantly larger so this will stick out a good bit this didn't stick out at all that right there should be all we need to do yeah these cooler lines are not having it so this is going to be interesting because I'm going to have to take the cooler cap off and kind of set it over there. So hopefully we can do that without spilling too much oil. That'll give us a little bit of slack on the line and we should be able to get this bumper out of the way. All right, so I've got the filter cap down over here. Hopefully this will give us enough room to get the splitter on, but we'll find out. These are like sunk in so those are the hardware for the old splitter so i'm gonna have to remove those because they do stick out from underneath so that'll be fun all right so these came up pretty easy i'm not worried about it but you just dig a little screwdriver work them up and you take a pair of massively oversized wire cutters that everyone has and just kind of work it up and then we're done all right now on to the meat and potatoes, which is actually going to be mounting it. Um, so the splitter actually mounts underneath this plate. And then that little tab bracket on the bottom is going to have to go through here, which is going to be a lot of fun to get those bolted down. So I deleted my AC, but I still have these freaking AC shrouds on because I'm an asshole. So. 
I kind of wonder if we're going to be able to just slide. Let's take a look here. That. Some big mounts. I don't think that's going to work. That. Yeah, of course these go all the way through. All right, well, let's just try and put it on and see what happens. See if we can actually get it up in there. Get out of my face. So that will come out now. It's out of the way, that's gonna make my life significantly easier. If it overheats, it's because it's an E36, not because I removed ducting, so. Such is life with these cars. So let's get that on. You probably could put this on with AC and all that stuff, but if you wanna put this on with AC, that's your own, uh, it's your own problem, my guy. All right, so we're mounted. However, that section there is supposed to bolt up to that section there. And it doesn't really seem to want to go that high. So what I'm going to do is loosen these four bolts here and see if I can slide that plate up into place right there. And then maybe we can get to tightening those down. All right, so I got those bolts started. Um, it was not without sacrifice. So those bolts are going through the radiator support down through this L bracket. Um, unfortunately, due to height differences, we kind of lost our holes in the center section. So right here on the side that I haven't done yet, you'll notice it's sitting super low. Um, so on this plate here, this is all one slide bracket, but on the L bracket back here, you can see it stops. So there's a, a single hole indexing hole that's not a slide bracket like this. When you get it to that side, on that size, so the L bracket is bolted to the radiator support and these are bolted to that support, the uh, bumper shock. The indexing holes on the L bracket are not high enough to go through this and these really don't have enough adjustability. So if I keep going up with this, if I could, then you would see the hole. So that's gone, which is kind of unfortunate. So I've removed the splitter. So we can a little bit more clearly get an idea of what the problem is. So we have holes here. So you see that hole doesn't really line up with anything. And these also kind of set a little bit offset, which I find interesting, but oh well. All right, so I found the root source of our problem. Not this problem, but the alignment problem with these. The reason they don't line up perfectly is because the radiator support is shifted over that way. This mounts to the radiator support. This mounts to the stud on the frame itself. Um, this radiator support is still welded. There's a spot weld right here and a spot weld over there. So this is still a factory radiator support. It has not been removed from the car ever since the car was made. So those are factory welding. And I'm kind of interested to find out that they didn't really um, consider that or compensate for that in their design of the splitter. Unfortunately, it means that our brackets, which are supposed to sit like that, do not line up, as you can tell, with the lower mount here. Which means that this is going to be kind of off. I mean, I could probably bend it into place, but interesting. All right, so we're gonna go for the good old fashioned send um, and pray to the car gods for stability and fitment. So I've got the core support. I've got the uh, bumper shocks on loosely. So these will slide around a bit. And we're just gonna put the splitter on and freaking really hope for the best. It's not pretty, but we'll see if it works. So now I kind of want to set the splitter height. So what I think we're going to do is take a measurement from the mounting hole on the bumper down to the bottom of the bumper. And then we'll take a measurement from where it mounts here 
and then kind of match that with the splitter or get close to it so that way you know it's not a bumper on see how it is bumper off make adjustments bumper on this will kind of give us like a better i guess a better hole shot as far as height goes all right so we're on and mounted everything is tight everything is bolted down we've got similar gaps as we do on the bumper so this height should be appropriate it's gonna look pretty mean i know this video kind of seems like i'm bashing on it a little bit but, you know. All right, so we ran to our first problem mounting the bumper. And that is part of the bumper is in the way of the support. So we're gonna have to pull it back off, trim it a bit, and go for install again. All right, so I've got little triangle sections out of the bumper where it mounts onto here because that bar was getting in the way of the factory bumper. So hopefully we should have clearance for that. All right, so there we have it with the trim installed. Um, I'm still gonna take it up, take the front tires off and we can get to securing some stuff under there. So I don't necessarily think we need to pull the bumper back off though. Very nice. All right, so I put the oil cooler filter cap back on and this is it with the hood closed. That thing does stick out quite a bit, pretty sick. I like the style, it looks good. But it's a lot more stable with the bumper on than it was with the bumper off. It still has a little bit of flex in it, but it's pretty solid. I kind of got it a little bit higher than the bumper. So the splitter is kind of pushing up on the bumper and the bumper is kind of pushing down on the splitter. So it'll give it a little bit more stability. Um, I do still want to sink some things in like back here. Maybe one in this corner, one up by the fog light. So it'll kind of hold that up better and make it even more stable. So let's go ahead and do that. But aside from that, it's on. I'm very excited. It looks great. It's kind of hard to see with this light because the, uh, the car is facing away from the sun. All right, so we got it up. So I'm gonna secure our fender wells, which are still loose. And then I popped out my uh, fog light delete panels. And so hopefully we should be able to tag something. I'm probably gonna end up drilling through the splitter on the bottom to secure all of this stuff. Then we can just run some hardware through there and get that. <clears throat> hopefully it'll suck up a little bit more so it's not hanging super low relative to the bumper. All right, so we got our additional hardware on. So I ended up reusing um, the hardware that came from the original splitter or the original under tray that I had on the car. Um, so I did two here. I did one in the middle right about there and then two on that side. It didn't quite suck it up to the bumper as well as I would hope, but it's pretty freaking close, man. It's definitely sitting just right on it, which is very nice. So we just got some simple, simple nuts and bolts. Simple nuts and bolts on the back. Um, unfortunately, these fender liners have sustained a lot of damage over the years. So even though I don't want to end up zip tying them, I think I might have to go that route with it. So we're gonna see what it takes to get these back in. The other one actually used these like clamps that I could use to kind of tie down the fender liner because it's damaged and so you kind of grab a tab with that. And I guess I could have used it, but the more I get into drifting, the less ashamed I am of using zip ties. It is freaking stable, man. It's solid as far as fender liner goes. And for the matter of fact, this thing is pretty stout now too. So that's, that's in and out. It really doesn't have any forward or backward play to it, which is kind of what I was worried about when I had it on the mounts originally. So it came out much more solid than I thought it was going to, which is really good. I'm actually really happy with the way this turned out, despite the issues that we kind of ran into with the install. It looks mad. It, uh, I don't know if it's gonna work that well as far as downforce goes, but hey, 
We're styling, baby. We're stunting. That's what it's all about, right? I just wish they didn't have these little holes on the side. I don't know what that's about, but aside from that, it's great. Aside from all the install hiccups, the final product is pretty freaking great, I think. So I'm going to throw the wheels on. And then tomorrow we're going to go shoot some beauties, which you'll see right now.